All right, hey everybody. So um, today we're going to talk about Chuck. Um, here's Chuck. This is a mini article is your uh, program that you should be using um, unless you're on the Karma machines in which you'll just be using straight Chuck in the command line. Um, this is called an IDE, which is basically a coding environment. And I'll walk you through it right now. Um, here's the main window, kind of your coding window. I believe it's just called uh, the, the sh oh, I've never used this before. Um, I don't even know. This is the main coding window. Um, so this is where you'll put your stuff in, um, assign your variables, um, and the like. Um, over here is a virtual machine. This is basically how Chuck keeps its strongly timed uh, ways. So you start it up. Um, you'll see that in the console it's showing that it started. Um, and what will happen is that you have all these loops that happen. So um, when I start adding shreds, which is here, um, it'll show up here, basically showing that there's a process running. And what a shred is, is basically like a thread in other uh, programming languages, which is just a process. And you can create a shred, you can create multiple shreds happening at the same time in parallel. Um, you can have your program create different shreds by, by what's called sporking. Um, and it's really great. But also what's really great is this replace shred, making it so it's very simple just to uh, tweak the code, change it on the fly. So if I wanted to this print it out, print out um, frequency, this is how you print something out. Um, cool. So you see that it got to the end of the script. What Chuck does is basically reads it as a, like a script. So it goes um, sequentially down. Um, and then when it f finishes, uh, it just exits the program. So you didn't even probably see the shred come up. Um, what you have to do in Chuck is you have to pass time. So what you can do is you can say uh, one second and then Chuck that to now. And that's how you pass time. So now it'll stay there for one second and then go away. Um, and that's really great. So I can do a while true. Um, frequency. We'll have that. We'll have it print out the frequency and then we'll add one to the frequency. And if you haven't noticed, Chuck's a little backwards in how you start how you define variables is that you put the the value here and then you, you chuck it to the variable. Um, this is really useful when you're doing something like a sine oscillator. And then you want to put it through some reverb. And then you want to send it to the um, sound card, which is the DAC. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, OK, so what's going to happen is that this will um, print out the frequency, add one, print out the frequency, add one. So, And you see it's going really fast. And if I let this run, it's probably going to break. And why is that? Um, so what's happening is it's basically as soon as it gets the information, it prints it out, and then it breaks. Cool. So I'll abort that. Cool. Um, so what, what happened is it, I'm not passing any time. So uh, Chuck really is really likes to pass time. You uh, need to have at least some something uh, some sort of time pass in the program to let it catch up because it's so strongly timed. So this will make more sense when you start looking at sound. But I chuck five milliseconds to now, and now it shouldn't complain. Cool. So you can have it do it every uh, one second. Then move it down to 0.5 seconds, and it will space. If I replace replace shred, it starts over again. I can do milliseconds, so I can just do. You just saw milliseconds. Um, I can do day. I can do minute. I can do hour. I think I can do week. Yeah, and I can do all the way down to samp, which is just a sample. So. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, different different levels you can code on, um, but this will be really great when you start looking at sound. Um, cool. So, uh, getting started in Chuck is 
pretty simple. There are a lot of resources. There's actually a Coursera class specifically for Chuck, um, just using it from a uh, for for students of like digital arts learning how to program. This is a pretty great great way. Um, so what I let recommend is the Chuck manual right here. Um, you should just look that up. You'll find the PDF. Um, has some great tutorials in it. I'll talk about the black hole here a little bit. Um, and just just really, really helpful. Um, and then there's Chuck examples. If you look at the Chuck doc slash examples, has some great stuff about how to use the mic input, um, how to use do FM synthesis. Uh, what else do we have? Um, time and duration, basic stuff like that. And there's also the unit generators. Oh, I think the Chuck by example had some uh, how to use stuff like, oh, maybe I'm looking at the programming guide. Oh, this is useful as well. I use this all the time. So the different libraries. So how do, how do you get the absolute value? How do you get a random number? How do you uh, go from ASCII to an integer? How do you go from a MIDI number to a frequency? We can, we'll use that a lot. Frequency to a MIDI number, super useful. Um, cool. So, and then there's the unit generators. Uh, which we're going to talk about right now. So uh, one more thing about this is we need to think about variables. So you can have an int. You can have a float. I think there might be long. No, there's no long. Um, a duration, which is basically if this were 440 seconds, then you could have the duration s. Um, which is really useful when you're passing time or if you need to uh, manipulate time in some way. Um, and then functions. So we'll be using, you should uh, start learning how to use functions in Chuck. Basically, f uh, the word, the write the word fun and then what it will, basically what it will return. So void, int, float. You can't do anything like a Boolean, I think. I've been trying, but it doesn't, I don't think it works. Um, and then, so let's say it's a float, the function name, so uh, foo, and then the two, and then any parameters that you add to it. So I'll make this an int. And then if you just wanted foo to add them together and return it, you could just do return param1 plus param2. Great. Um, so to call it, all you have to do doesn't matter where you call it, as long as it's wherever. Doesn't matter where you put the uh, the function, just as long as you call it in the correct place you want it to be called. Um, one and two. This should return. This should return three. And then I'll check this to now so it doesn't have to deal with it. Cool. And this will run for 440 seconds, so let's not. Cool. So, uh, yeah. What do we have now? Now we're going to go into sound. So, really, the whole reason why we use Chuck, why we're going to be using Chuck, is because it's super easy. So, can do a sign osc s. Send it to the DAC, which is what's happening is that it's the digital audio converter. It takes the, whatever information we're giving it, basically a sine wave, sending it to the sound card, and it will go out the speakers. Um, I can set the frequency. Um, I always do this wrong. Uh, 440 to the frequency. And I pass time, so let's make a one second tone. I always right, second to now, and if I add this, there you go. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, so real great, real easy to do. Um, so if you wanted to, let's say, let's say have multiple sine tones, you want to make a chord. Um, S2 to the DAC. And then make this, what is that, an A? Um, let's do 
I don't really know. So we'll do math dot. We'll make an a and a c. M to f sixty, which is a c, and make that s two dot freak. So that's an a and a c um, put together. Cool. Um, let's say you wanted to change the levels of that. I would just go s dot gain. Make that 0.5. Oh, I have a, I did not put a thing. Um, great. Cool. So, uh, yeah. Easy to do. Making sounds. You can use SinOSC. I'll get rid of the S2 stuff. Cool. So you can use SinOSC. You can make a... Uh, just look them up, but you can make a square osc. So you can make a triangle, which is a lot of video game music sounds like that. Cool. Um, so let's say you wanted to basically play a scale or play some notes in a scale. The one, three, five, what is it? Whole, whole, half. I haven't done this in a while. Whole. Whole, whole half, whole, whole. Sure, we're gonna do just that. We're just doing that much. Cool, because that's how much I know. Um, so if I want this, I need to make it int. Note. I think that's right. Let me look up. I think I have a uh, example here somewhere. Oh, here's where I was looking for. But basically, this if you want any of these arrays, exactly what I need to do, array assignment. Um, this is how you will do it. It's pretty great. Um, so, yeah, things like that. Store and retrieve values. Operators, triangle control structures, so for loops, how to make functions, all these great things about how to use joystick info. We'll be using that for your controllers. You can use the mouse, you can use keyboard. Your OSC is kind of the uh, kind of the messaging system we'll be using for for, um, for processing to get it to, the, to talk to each other. But all I'm looking at is that, this scale. Ooh, I was quite off, but we won't talk about it. Cool, so I use that scale. Um, and we'll, instead of having frequency, let's just have it in, um, um, MIDI notes. So, cool. So now if I do this while true, um, S star, okay, so M to F math.m2f of um, key plus scale index this is the um, mod which is basically getting the remainder you'll see kind of like uh, five I think there's five in here one two three four five yeah so um, when you do a mod, it's pretty great if you're trying to uh, get different, give just uh, something that's cyclical, like going through, I want to go through this list, 0, 2, 4, 7, 9, then back to 0. So what I can do is say, okay, f just have index B, start with 0 for index. Um, and then add 1 to index each time. Cool. So what's going to happen is that index will go from 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then go back to 0 when it hits 5 because it's basically saying, okay, what is this divided by, what is the remainder when I divide this by 5? And it gives me that. Um, so really helpful um, when you do anything that's kind of uh, periodic. So this is kind of like how clocks work. 
um, you just mod, mod by 60 and it works like that. Um, cool, so send this to the frequency and we should have something that looks good. We'll make this a little bit faster so every quarter second. I was gonna do something with random, but I think I think I'm okay. Um, basically, you could get it so it would do a random number between these, but I'd have to. We'd have to look up the random function, uh, and I think that's in the this one. So I think that this is yeah random, which only gives I believe. Oh, we do math dot random. Anyway, not useful. Ah, right there. So this is how you would basically do um, integers. Cool. Um, oh, what the hell, we'll do it. Um, put min and max, and we'll do it. So math.random2, key plus um, scale 0, to key plus scale 4, which is the final one and see if that works. Does anybody know why that happened? Because I did not make it. Um, I did not do it to the MIDI number, to the actual frequency. So it was basically just doing 60, 62, 64, so not very interesting, but this should be better. So definitely sounds like a like a dungeon right now, you know, uh, like in an old school video game. So super cool. Really enjoy this stuff. Um, so you know, definitely think about. Um, you know, making some cool sounds here. You can put it through like a high pass filter. I think that's just, uh, I forgot how to do a high pass. Uh, LPF. Low pass filter. Uh, let's see what that sounds like if I. Ooh, it did not. Oh, I haven't done this for a while. Let's find an example. Nah, we just won't. We just won't. Let's just not. Um, okay. So, yeah. So all we have to do now is just think about how to do... Uh, I kind of talked about sporking a little bit. Basically, um, I have my function fun void foo. Um, and it takes some parameters, outputs something. And I want it to run kind of uh, next... I want it to run independently of the rest of my program. And all you have to do for that is just use this term spork and then give it the parameters and it will run basically in parallel. So if I just have, have this outputting, hello, um, every second, Cool. And then I have something else that is um, is basically just uh, doing a uh, sign off to s. 
and making that every like 0.5 seconds. Yeah, so basically um, what we have is 0.25 second to now, and we can have this saying, hey, hey, um, cool. So what's happening now is that this guy every second will say hello, but every second this guy is going to say hey, and the entire time this uh, sign tone is going to be playing. So it's going to be pretty crazy. So let's watch it. Oh, I didn't do a while true. Let's do a while true here. So you see that it's kind of lining up every time doing it. There is four and then a hello because it's uh, four times and then only four, uh, four times it will say hey when in each hello. So this is really interesting if you're trying to think about kind of things in synchrony, things um, going on independently, very useful. Um, so yeah, so these are kind of the building blocks. Um, and then I'm gonna show you my illusion. I used, I did the Deutsche illusion. Um, and so what I did was I went to the Wikipedia article. I found the Glissando illusion. I looked through a lot. I thought this one was uh, pretty interesting. So um, it is a uh, fixed a sound with fixed pitch. Um, I used a saxophone sound. Um, played together with a sine wave gliding up and down in pitch and then switching back and forth between stereo loudspeakers. I needed a lot more information than that, so I found the paper. Um, I looked for the stimulus param st stimulus. Uh, where is that stimulus? Up, 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 up. Here we go. Stimulus parameters. Um, found that the first component is a oboe. Again, saxophone I'm using at 262, which is middle C. Um, and the second component is a sine wave frequency traced in a sinusoidal motion covering two octaves from 131 hertz to uh, 523. So um, in our scratch window, let's look at what does um, sine osc s to the DAC, um, uh, what does uh, 131 sound like? And then we'll do it for 5.5 seconds. So that's 131. We need 532. Cool. And then our, four, our 262. So three octaves or two octaves going, it's going in two octaves. Um, so we need our tone to basically sweep out from 131 in a sinusoidal motion up to uh, 532. And, uh, and also they need to, the two sounds need to uh, switch. So there's a lot going on and I'll kind of walk you through my code. I didn't really want to write it um, in front and just have it written out, which is more helpful. So. Um, I went to the unit gener generator kind of uh, reference, which is if you just look up uh, Chuck Ugen. So it has all the all the different things that Chuck ha Chuck uses. Um, but what you going to be really interested in is kind of the uh, STK instruments. So these are all physical models of different kind of instruments: a clarinet, a flute, mandolin. Um, and they all have uh, examples. So here's Mandomatic. I copy this code over. If you want to hear what it sounds like. Um, so you, and you can kind of walk through and try to figure out what's going on with the code. Because um, I use a lot of echo and interesting things there. I've used the modal bars a lot. They're really great for marimba sounds. Um, and we're using saxoph saxophony. Um, six, six off anyway, which basically just saxophone sound. Um, they have shakers, they have a sitar. Uh, this is a basically like a, a guitar string. Um, Carpal strong, pretty famous physical model. 
Um, is he even a physical model? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, I picked the saxophone because it needed to be an oboe. And this panning is a uh, Eugen that uh, basically is going to pan this from, I need to go from the left speaker to the right speaker, and I need the sign tone to do the same. So this is what this panner does. Um, as you can see, it kind of makes it makes more sense now why um, why uh, Chuck goes from left to right with its declarations, because I can start putting this stuff through a lot more crazy things. So I can make it put it through an LFO, if I remember how to do those, which I don't, or low pass filter, L LPF. Yeah, I can put it through LPF. I can put it through a, uh, what else can I put it through? I can make an uh, N, uh, add some reverb, NREV or JC rev. I can, I think there's delay. I can't remember the delay. You can look that up. Yeah. Um, so it's really helpful. You can also use some, you can do some uh, frequency modulation, um, stuff like that. It's very cool stuff. Um, so I have my sine wave and I have my sax, uh, saxophone sound. I have them at two different parts of the, uh, parts of the two different um, two different channels. So if I just want, if they weren't gonna move, I wouldn't have to do this. And I could just do DAC.left or DAC.right or just the DAC, which will put them through both speakers. Um, but since they're gonna move, I wanted to have them in the panning. Um, we'll talk about this later. Um, cool. So then um, I needed my sine wave to yeah, so the saxophone is fine. I set the saxophone frequency at 262. And then I went out to start working on my sine wave, which needs to go from 131 to 523 in a sinusoidal fashion um, with a period of two, with um, in 2.5 seconds with a period of 2.5. Um, so what I did is we all know that the, in, the reciprocal of period is frequency. So I did that. I took it 1.0 divided by the period. Um, and then I got how uh, how much uh, how many uh, how, how much space it goes between the high the interval of the high end minus the low end gives me the pitch interval, um, and yeah. So then what's going to happen is I need it to go in a sinusoidal fashion, and so this is what this uh, sine sine s does. I'm not gonna actually listen to this. It's not gonna be used in any sort of audio. I just need to find this sample, basically where this is at a certain time. And that's what the black hole is for. It's for things that are not gonna be um, sent to the, the sound card, it's just being sampled. And this is how you sample it using s.last. I add one to make it all positive to go from, instead of negative one to one, it goes from zero to two, divide it by two, so basically um, scale it down back to zero to one, multiply it by the pitch interval, and then add it to the low end. So this is now going to go in a sinusoidal fashion from 131 to 532. So we can take out all the saxophone stuff. If I take out all the saxophone stuff, we should be able to hear it. Yeah, pretty cool. Cool. Um, so Chuck does it all. We don't have to think about like how to get it to move it from you know small frequency up to the higher. Uh, it just does it for us, which is really great. So I did that every 20 milliseconds. And this is actually in the Chuck manual. I just stole it pretty much from uh, right here. So pretty good stuff. But now what we need to do is we need it to um, make the saxophone in this in the sine wave move between uh, left and right, and that will be using the alternating but alternate function. And what that's doing is it's basically saying, okay, first we had this going to the right speaker, this going to the left speaker. I can't remember if it's backwards or, 
and then after every 238 milliseconds, which is here, um, we're going to pan between, we're going to basically switch them up. So multiplying by negative one, switch the, switch the sign, and uh, that will switch where they are. Um, but I don't want this to interfere with what's going on here, basically, that I'm sampling every 20 seconds. So I spork it. And if you see this, it will come up over. Oh, this one's still going. Is that my 440? Cool. <laughs> the 400, 440 seconds. Um, yeah, so it is a uh, alternating interval. It's going to alternate and make sure whenever you're using a new different kind of instrument, kind of get familiar with it. So to make the saxophone start start to make sound, um, usually it's just like a sign sign oscillator. You don't have to do anything, but for a saxophone, you have to just to uh, do start blowing. There's also a bunch of different um, different uh, variables that you can uh, really start messing with. And there's a good um, saxophone uh, example program that kind of makes a bunch of different sounds and you can kind of hear what what all the different uh, different features of the um, of the saxophone generator kind of how they how they affect the tone um, yeah so this should work I'll uh, play it it's not gonna work unless you're kind of on headphones but uh, the general idea is that um, the oboe should be heard switching between the loudspeakers, but the sine wave should be joined together seamlessly, though we know that is not the case. So, so I'm going to move the, uh, the microphone in between there. Cool. So hopefully this helps um, get you some ideas about how you're going to start um, using Chuck. We'll have Ga give a much better uh, kind of introduction or a little deeper introduction and uh, also talk about using how to get processing and Chuck to talk to each other. So uh, very cool stuff. I hope, uh, you know, email me with questions because we can get this going. Always, uh, you know, look at look here, um, search on the online for any kind of error you might be having. And just remember, like, a lot of people have problems with Chuck. Like, you, like it's 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 error prone sometimes. So if save your work, cause it can crash if you don't pass time. So always before you run it, try to try to save the, uh, the program. Cool. All right. Sounds good. Thanks guys.